Let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of the muscles. Each muscle is composed by many individual muscle fibers that are bundled together and they form one unit of contraction. When all these bundles are coming together is the continuity of the connective tissue or fascia of this system what goes and merge into the connective tissue of the bone. And this is how the muscles are attached to the bone. There is no a nail or a staple there. It's the continuity of the connective tissue that is coming from each muscle fiber that goes and blends into the connective tissue of the bone. And this is very important for us to understand because what happens with your kids sometimes is that this tissue is much, much weaker. I'm going to give you an example later, okay? Fascia allows the gliding of each fiber on its own track. I usually use the example of the fascia being like the lines in the lanes in the highway, keeping the cars running on its own lane. That is what's happening with the fascia. The fascia keeps each muscle fiber running on its own lane. This fascia has a lubricant inside that allows gliding, like a oil in a car or in a machine. When we don't move enough, the lubricant that is allowing that gliding between each fiber sometimes gets stuck. It's like an oil machine that we don't use and then that oil inside gets kind of hard and, and viscous. Well, the same happens here. So we could be getting some tightness, not because of what is happening in the central nervous system, but because of the properties of the tissues that are around each muscle fiber. If we don't move, the lubricant gets stuck and we lack or we miss that gliding. This is my version of a transverse cut of a muscle. And this is just to show how in between each muscle fiber there is a lot of connective tissue around. So our goal with this routine is to address that. We're going to promote that in these layers there's enough fluids so they can glide properly. Let's go back for a minute and zoom in into the connection between the muscle, the tendon, and the bone. So I'm gonna to switch to another example. In this case, my hand is gonna be the bone. This piece of padding represents the connection between the contractile part of the muscle belly and the bone. When we have a healthy fascial system, the connection is strong enough to the point that if we move our bones apart, only the contractile part of the muscle is the one being stretched. But in your kids, many times, that connection, that fascial system is very weak. So when we stretch by moving the bones apart, we don't know if that movement is coming from the contractile part of the muscle or just because we are breaking or making weaker the areas that are already very weak. Let's focus now in what is happening with the connection between the muscle, the continuity of that connective tissue and the way it merges into the bone. Because now I'm going to use this concept to explain what happens when we stretch a muscle that is tight like this. You're probably familiar with the hamstrings, which are the muscles that are in the back of the thigh. In many cases, those muscles get really, really tight and they restrict the way the knee can go into extension. So I'm going to use this batting and elastic band to represent that. The connection between the bone and the contractile part of the muscle, which is the elastic band. If the fascial system is good and is healthy and strong, 
when I stretch my leg like this, I am getting the proper stretch of the muscle, of the contractile part of the muscle. But what happens many, many times with your kids is like this connection is not strong. In fact, it's very weak. That means that if we go and we stretch like this, the muscle is already tight because of what's happening with the brain and not controlling properly the muscle tone. So if we go and we simply stretch the knee like this, we are not sure if this range is coming from the belly of the muscle or from breaking more links in the fascia that is already weak. So in this routine, we don't want to stretch because we're not sure where that movement is gonna come from. We just want to bring more nutrients to the tissue and we just want to bring more fluids to the fascia so it will allow better gliding of the contractile part of the muscle. That is what we want to work on. So to simplify this concept even more, we're going to pretend that the fascia is like this sponge and we want to promote the flow of the fluids that are inside to reach all the places that are not usually getting because of lack of movement. Those fluids are going to act as lubricants to promote more gliding and will also bring nutrients to make the tissues healthier.